Oh, we're live, guys. Sorry, I hear I was painting away, and we are live here on Home Talk. So, um, Christmas is coming, of course, and you will want some beautiful wall art to uh, decorate your home. So here I am just painting a backboard. Sorry, we're making a bit of noise on our little bumpy table there. Um, I'm painting the back part of a backboard because we're going to be making a sign today transferring graphics onto a piece of wood. And you can do this yourself at home and you just need a few things to be able to do that. So we're going to show you how to do that. Um, just a warning, we have had a little few issues with Facebook this morning, so if it does cut out, just hang tight and we'll join you in a minute as soon as we can figure out what's going on. So today, um, what you'll need to do this is a painted board. So you can see I've just painted it in a white. I prefer doing it on a light colour, but you can do it on darker colours if you want. It just works easier for the end process and you'll be able to see what I mean um, after that, after a little while. While I'm getting sorted here, tell me where you're tuning in from. I'd love to hear um, where you are from today. Lots of people from America, as always, and Canada. Um, I'm from Australia, if you're wondering about the funny accent, and if you haven't seen me on Home Talk Live before. I'm Sharon, and I blog over at I Restore Stuff, because that's what I do. I love restoring furniture, um, doing DIY crafts for the home. So you'll find me at i-restorestuff.com over on my blog. Jump over there, subscribe, that'll be fun. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, lots of places. So I'm sure Hannah will be adding all those links down on the feed. But tell me where you're from. Where are we tuning in from today? I've got my friend Shireen here, but she can't see the live feed. We are just, you know, all sorts of having fun today. So um, I can see the live right there on the screen, Shireen. See that button over to the left? Just press that one there. I think we've got it, girls and boys. Woo! Anyway. Maybe not. Um, so, if Hannah can maybe let Shari know where we're from, that'll be great. We've got several graphics here. We're going to choose today. Today I'm going to be working on this little reindeer because it's very Christmassy. Can you see that? Isn't it cute? Got the little pine cones. It's almost like a little wreath around the deer. So that's the one we're going to be using. But you can use any kind of Christmas graphics. Now, a great place, if you just search online for... Um, free antique graphics, you will be able to find so many. One of the places I love to get them from is the Graphics Fairy. She has lots and lots, and they're all copyright free because they're so old that, you know, copyright doesn't matter. So if you'll notice on here, you may notice that these are all back to front. The writing is backwards. So this is important when you're doing this particular method of transferring graphics onto wood or furniture or whatever you're putting it onto. You need to have, on your printer, you'll find a setting that says, it might say flip horizontal, or it might say print reverse, something like that. So it's important that the graphic is backwards. And I don't know if you can see through that to see what it actually says, but um, it actually says complements of the season. If you look through the other way, this one is a Santa stop here. And this is a, another cute little... Christmas one that says, May Christmas bring you everything that you're wishing for. Very cute graphics. So once you've chosen your graphic, we will... Oh, and don't forget that we have a giveaway coming up soon. So don't go anywhere because you will want a Home Talk tote bag. Yes! So that's what you're going to win. And you'll stick around for the giveaway question, which we'll be asking um, partway through our segment today. What I'm doing right now is cutting out the graphic because if we don't want all the excess paper around it. So I'm just going to cut directly around this little deer. And, uh, but let me say that if you've got something that, see, I've got a defined border here that I'm actually cutting around, which makes it a little bit easier. A little bit to go. I feel like I'm shaking or something. Guys, am I nervous? Help me to calm my nerves here. Tell me I'm doing okay. All right. <clears throat> if you've got, what I was saying was, if you've got something like this where it's got, it doesn't have a defined border, just cut around and give yourself a little bit of space around the outside of the graphic. You don't want to be cutting too close to the words because when you do the second part, you'll understand why. You want a little bit of room around there. So if you're cutting out, make sure you leave a little bit of room. 
So because I've just painted this board here, I'm letting it dry, but I just wanted to show you how easy it was just to paint a little board to do your graphic on. Here's one that's already dried. I've given it two coats because I want a nice um, background to be nice and clear. I'll just move my paint out of the way and dunk my brush in a bit of water. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just grab a little piece of sandpaper and if it's a bit rough, we're just going to smooth it off a little bit so we've got a nice smooth surface. And so if you're using something like chalk paint or milk paint, you may have some little, a bit of an uneven, porous, rough surface. It doesn't have to be super smooth. But what I do recommend is using a flat matte paint to do this project. Um, I just find that it sticks better with your transfer medium. So if you're um, using a paint, just make sure it's some kind of flat matte finish. All right, I'm going to do this so it's sort of facing you. So remember, we've printed out our graphic, but what we're going to do is we're going to be putting it straight down on the board. So you can choose which way you're going to put it. We could put it, I think I'll put mine long ways today. So there's our deer. We're going to be putting it down this way. So what I'm going to use today, and there's so many different uh, transfer mediums that you can use out there on the market today. I'm just using Fusion's transfer gel. Um, I've used Mod Podge before. I've used, some people have even used Elmer's craft glue. Um, I don't know, have you guys used that before? Have, I haven't used it, so I'd love to see in the comments if you've got, you know, if there's any preferred method, if you've done this before, if you've transferred graphics using a transfer gel, let me know um, what you prefer to use. What have we got, Shireen? We can see some comments coming up. There's people coming We've from... We've got people from all over the world. We've Woo! got people from Canada. Canada. <clears throat> from Aussie. Australia. Someone from Chindera in New South Wales. Oh, yay. Um, Chindera, New South Wales. <laughs> Portugal, Bulgaria. Wow. New Zealand. Oh, guys, you're coming over from all over the world. That's amazing. That and is so we've awesome. Got all the states in the US. Pretty much every state will be yes. represented there, I'm Lots sure. Home Talk is so popular for DIY Live. Post. So I hope you're enjoying today's. We're going to be um, transferring this graphic, if you've just tuned in, transferring this graphic onto a piece of wood. So um, there are two different ways of doing this. Now, I used to do it this way. I used to put it down here and uh, put my gel all over the image and then lay it down. But I've since found another way, which I do tend to prefer, and that is to put my gel all over here first and then put my image down. Oh, I'm missing something. What I do need is my husband's wallet. <laughs> Can I have your wallet, babe? No. Yes. Yes, he's the camera guy. <laughs> I need your wallet because this is a really important thing that you need. <laughs> I promise. Girls, we can go shopping. <laughs> I've got his wallet. Yes. Um, what you need is a credit card. Okay, so what have we got here? Velocity, frequent flyer. That's not going to get me much, honey. What about a shopping card? Oh, well, we can go have coffee at Merlot's. <laughs> a great ad for Merlot's coffee in Brisbane. Um, so if you're in Australia, this is a coffee place that my husband must frequent very often, but, you know, I've got his wallet now, so <laughs> look out. Shopping time, it's Christmas. We've got to go shopping, girls. Okay, and guys, if you're listening... You know, I don't want to leave everybody out. So what we're going to do, and I'll show you what we're using the credit card for later, um, is plaster this all over the board. Now, there is sort of a, you know, you want to move fairly quickly and you want to put a decent amount of gel on. So is, is there anyone there saying what they prefer to use, Shireen? For, has anyone done this method before? I'd love to hear from you if you have done this method of transferring graphics before. No. Nobody. I thought there'd be for sure some people who've tried it. Okay, so here's the gel. Nice and see how we've got it all even. I haven't gone right to the edges because that's not necessary. We only need to cover the part where our um, deal is going to be. I'll just stick that on here somewhere. Yeah. And we're going to centre it. Make sure we've got it in the centre. There we go. 
smooth it over with your hands, and here's the part where we need the, the credit card, store card, whatever you want to use. And we want to make sure that there's no air bubbles and that it goes right out to the end. So you kind of start from the centre and you're moving out all the way out to the end. Don't forget we've got a giveaway coming up. And if you like lots of DIY tutorials, um, catch me over at my blog, irestorestuff.com. So there we go, we've smoothed out all of the edges, all of the air bubbles. I do see a little bump right here and I'm not sure whether that may be part of the paint, but we've just got to be careful not to tear through the paper. And now we're merging the, I really don't know scientifically and technically what exactly is happening there, but somehow the ink magically sticks into the gel and you'll see what happens in the next step. Don't forget we've got a giveaway question coming up for you to win a chance, for you to win the famous Home Talk tote bag. And so the Home Talk girls will send that to you if you're the winner. Um, so once we've done that step, as you can see, you can see gel all around the edge here, but it dries clear and you don't have to worry about that. Um, we've got a nice even surface. The very, the most important thing is to get those edges right at the edge all stuck down. We don't want any lifting anywhere because then you'll get tearing and it won't come off properly in the end. And this, my friends, is where you need to put on your patient's pants. Does everybody have their patient's pants? Do I sound like one of those school, school teachers? Come on, children, <laughs> wear your patient's pants. Okay, so it takes a while for that to dry, but because we are doing live home talk, we don't have, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, <clears throat> ain't nobody got time for that. So. I have a piece that I've prepared earlier. Now, another trick, in, if you don't want to wait all day, because overnight is really the best so that it's absolutely dry, because dry, 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 have I emphasised that enough, is what you want with this um, demo. So if you don't have a day, which this has been drying now for a day or two, because I've prepared it earlier, <clears throat> and you'll see my... Gel has dried around the edge there. You might be able to see the shiny bits, but really um, not much to show. So um, the trick that you can do is to put this into a really slow oven. If you don't have all day, um, I have turned the oven onto a really low temperature. Now, in Australia, that would be like 100 degrees, but I don't know what that is in American. Do you know, Shireen, my friend? No, I we don't, don't know. Sorry. So that's Celsius, but you can figure that out. Um, just a really, really low temperature. And so then you just pop that in the oven and wait till your board has dried. I'd say maybe an hour at the most is probably all you need and it'll be dry, dry, ready to go. So this is the part where um, we will need to have some water and a cloth or two. <clears throat> what we're going to do is soak our cloth in the water so our image is underneath here and the secret will be revealed. Are you ready for it? Okay, we're gonna soak our cloth. I'm gonna get another cloth in there just in case we need another one. <coughs> um, and I think we're ready to start asking and getting some ideas for that giveaway question. Oh, hang on, let's see. I, you might have to come down over on top of this because what we're seeing now, once that cloth has soaked into the paper, you can start to see through the paper and you can see the image coming through. So I don't know if you can see that there, Mr. Cameraman, who's doing an awesome job. <laughs> okay. Come here. See, look. See it see through and you can see a little bit of the deer because we've soaked the water all over there and you can see the dry patches where it's still a bit dry but here's where the magic happens you start to rub your image like this and you'll start to see little uh, bits of paper starting to rub off so the paper rubs off and our image starts to peek through now sometimes it's a little bit tricky and we might rub away some of the image. You can be as careful as you want, <clears throat> but you know, because it's vintage and it's um, 
and it's supposed to have a bit of an antique look to it. It's okay if some rubs away, don't cry. It'll be okay. It'll still have a lovely vintage look. So here's where we're going to just rub away. And while I'm rubbing away the thing, we're going to ask the giveaway question. So if you would like to win a Home Talk tote bag, the question is, <laughs> let me go to my notes, what holiday image would you transfer onto your sign? Or maybe, and tell us what you want to transfer it onto, because maybe you don't want to do a sign. Maybe you're going to do a, you're going to transfer your image onto something else. So I want to hear those fun answers that you've got. Um, what would you transfer? What image would you transfer for your holiday? So remember, holiday is the key. Uh, what ho holiday image would you transfer? And what would you put it on? So get your thinking caps on. Can we see some there, Shireen? Um, just a couple of questions, yes, Sharon. Yes, you've got people, some questions. Yes. yes, people are wondering where you got the graphics from. Yes. If you printed them yourself. Oh, I did, okay. Um, and oh. what, what kind of printer did you use to print them? Is there a special? Absolutely, fantastic questions. I love it. Please, if you have any more questions, ask away. So um, I got this graphic, this particular deer, from the Graphics Fairy. And if you just Google the Graphics Fairy, she's really popular. Karen over there. Hi, Karen. Um, she has so many um, vintage and antique graphics there. It's amazing. You'll be there for days looking up all sorts of things. Um, and what was the next question? We, where, did I print it out? Okay, so the printing is quite important. Um, what you print it on, it's really best, I've found, to do it on a laser printer. So if you don't have a laser printer, I know I don't, but I do um, do them at work because work allows me to print them off very cheaply. Or you can go to your local office or copy centre um, and you can do them there. So what was there another question on? Yes, I printed them off and that's the best way. And don't forget, if you've only just tuned in, if you're doing an image that has words on it, remember to print the image uh, in reverse and it doesn't matter so much like I'm just printing a deer and it doesn't matter if he's in reverse or if he's the right way around but you'll want to put your image in reverse and now you can see why because we're putting the image down and the image is facing up uh, for our revealing process and so you want your words to be around the right the right way and I did learn that the wrong way so <laughs> you don't want to make that mistake um, as you can see, the paper is making a great big mess. And it's, um, this is the therapeutic fun part. We do transferring graphics workshops, and this is our chat and have a coffee on the side kind of moment where we're all rubbing away the image. Any more questions, or do you have some ideas there, Shireen? A couple of questions. People yep. are asking, can you put this on glass? Can you put it on glass? Um, you could try, but I really don't know that it would work on such a slippery surface. Uh, if anyone has done it on glass, please let me know. That would be great to know. But I find it best on, like I said um, earlier about the paint surface, I find it best if it's done on a matte finish paint, so the paint uh, surface is quite porous. You could do it on natural wood if you wanted to. Um, yeah, and darker colours if you wanted to, but you just, I find a lighter colour works easier because the reason is because the paper is white and so if you have edges that might show, then it's less likely that you'll see it on a light surface than if you have a darker surface. So, We're also getting a lot of questions now just to, yeah. um, wondering what was the name of the gel that you used or what kind of medium are you using? Um, it's a transfer gel or it's like a decoupage gel. So this one's by Fusion and you can use, I think that other decoupage gels might work. Um, I used to use Mod Podge as another one. Someone said that they've tried Elmer's Craft Glue, just a normal clear glue, but I can't recommend that. I don't know. Has anyone used that before? I haven't. So I can't really recommend or not that one. But I do love using um, this one. It's quite thick and able to be smoothed around really easily. Works really well. So anywhere you can get Fusion would have that. Yeah. We are nearly at the end of our... And if you come in close, you can see some areas where I have um, torn away the edge because I've 
either being a bit too rough with it or, you know, it's just quite fragile, the paper. And if you think about it, there's such a fine, fine line in between the paper and the ink and then the gel. So, you know, you can't help rubbing some little bits off here and there. Have we got some ideas? The, the giveaway question is, uh, what holiday transfer would you use and what would you put it on? So you don't have to be making a sign. You could put this on something else. Any ideas? We've got, a, uh, got any ideas quite there? Quite a lot of Santa. Santa, lot lots of, of Santas. Ones. Did you see my sign before? It had Santa stop here. I had, that was one of the signs we had. It's a cute little, it's just a black and white one. But as you can see, you can do colour and black and white. Yep. What else um, we got? We've got another one that says they'd like to have their dog wearing a Santa hat. Oh, how cute. Yes, that's, that's a great idea because you can use photographic images. Just print a photo out of you, your family. You could do family, family Christmas photo. Dog with a Santa hat. How cute. Uh, we've got a, a beach Christmas tree drawn in the sand. That would be appropriate for down here. That would be appropriate for Australia. Is that person from Australia? Who is that person? Tell us where you're from. Crystal. Crystal, Crystal Chan. The beach I tree if drawn she... in the sand. A beach tree or a beach tree? Yeah. No beach, B-E-A-C-H. Oh, okay. Drawn cool. in the sand. Um, here's one I really like, Krista. Um, Peace to all with yep. doves on a wooden sign. Oh, beautiful. Uh, vintage Santa. Quite a few wanting to do a vintage Santa, making a vintage looking sign. Great. Uh, Great ideas. Of, uh, Canadian <coughs> fall. What was that one? Sorry. Canadian fall picture. Okay. That sounds pretty. Very holiday. Someone else said they'd really like to do it for Thanksgiving with a photo oh, of their family. family. Absolutely. What a great idea. And it's all about the holidays. <coughs> There's so many at this time of year, especially for Americans having Thanksgiving as well. Yes. <coughs> great ideas. Keep them coming, people, because there's a home talk uh, tote bag on offer for the best answer. Well, for the one that we choose, that we think Shireen's going to be my helper picking because there's so many great ideas. Okay, you can see, if you come in here close, you can kind of see how we've really almost got it all there. Um, now, as it dries, you start to see the little parts that you've missed. So you can see um, little areas where it looks almost like it's a bit torn. You can see I've torn away a little bit of on the edge there. And as you've been able to notice, or maybe you haven't, um, I have been using my fingers some of the time. So I kind of tend to go between using the cloth and using my fingers um, to rub the paper away. And that's working really well. So then, you could even put some words on your sign. If you didn't see our last Home Talk Live that I did, we, we've been um, looking at ways to transfer graphics onto wood to make signs. You can transfer them onto furniture. Um, and our last one, we showed you how to use uh, carbon paper and how to make a sign that way. So you could actually use that carbon paper method to put some words, you know, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, um, whatever you'd like on your Christmas sign. And this would be the time that you do that. So you would do that before you put a final ceiling on it, which is what we're going to do next. So you can see that because we've been chatting and having such a fun time, it didn't take that long to get all that paper off there. And you know what? I have seen people do this on large pieces of furniture, like a tabletops, putting a great big, or a dresser and using a transfer image to put um, a whole, you know, huge graphic image on the front drawers of a dresser. So if you can picture all of the wonderful things that you could use this method of transferring graphics for, you'll be amazed at some of the, because you, let's face it, you home talk DIYers are crazy talented. And I know there's some creativity out there that will blow us all away. So, you know what? You can feel it still, the paper. And once you think you're all done, you go rub a little bit more and you get some more off. So it's sort of starting to dry and there's little cloudy bits that are kind of misty looking. And I know that it's not the mist because I saw the original image. 
there was no nest. So we just keep working on that paper until it's all gone. And like I said, it doesn't matter if you tear away some of these edge pieces. It's all part of the vintage look. And we're going to make it even more antique looking in just a minute because we're going to be putting um, a nice finish over this, which will even give more of an antique look to the whole transfer. So as it dries, I was saying you can see the cloudiness. You might be able to see that close up if you're looking here. So that's what we've got so far. But see he's looking a little bit cloudy in these areas. A little tiny bit is okay. But see there's another bit where I can feel like I can rub off a lot more. And you kind of go between letting, doing it dry or just dipping your finger in the water. And as you can see when it's wet, you can't see those cloudy bits. So there we go. It's pretty much all done. A few little cloudy areas won't matter too much because once we put our sealer over the top of it, that all tends to disappear. Like magic, really. Um, so I've got a bit of a mess here. I'll just sweep that out of the way. How's our answers going? I want to hear some of your giveaway answers to our question. Any more good ones there, Shireen? Um, yes. Our question was, what was our question again? What, would, what uh, holiday transfer would you use and what would you put it on? A Had sign some, or something else? Some really lovely family idea ones. This was yep. a, a different one from Janice. Uh, she'd have a picture of herself and her husband yep. saying first year married Aww. for Christmas. Yeah, Their because that's Christmas the first together. Christmas together. Mm. How sweet. Congratulations. Um, Is it? Their first Christmas together. Wow. Yes. That is awesome. That's beautiful. Lots of ideas with family photos. Someone yes. has actually even mentioned um, putting it on a flat rock. A flat rock. She's tried it on a flat rock. She and has. Apparently it works. Wow. There you go, people. You've heard it here. Flat rock. You can put it on a flat rock. That's a great idea. All right. Well, I'm going to let you choose, but we're, we're not going to tell the answer just yet because there might be some even better ones coming. Yes. Who knows? Um, Okay, so to finish off our beautiful transfer, and another thing, here's another idea that you could do. Let me just get a few samples of what I have done uh, before in the past. So you can get a bit of an idea, the things that you can do. So here's one that was just black and white, and I did it on a uh, pink background, but I did a Moroccan stencil also in the background. So you can stencil a whole image on the background there. And then I've put just this costume, ballerina dancer, another one from the graphics fairy, great graphics over there. Um, so that worked out really well. That's nice for a little girl's room. And here's another Christmas one. And look at this one. It looks really vintage because it's, it kind of felt like it all was uh, tearing off. And you'll find that practice makes perfect. And even after doing a number of these with this particular one, I had still done a number of them, but this happened. And I'm not sure exactly what the answer is or why it you know, lost part of the image. It could have been I didn't let it dry long enough. It could have been that this, um, the transfer gel, there might not have been enough underneath and between the image and the board. So those are some of the reasons, but still, it, it still makes for a vintage, antique kind of looking board. And here's another one I did with a bicycle. And here's something that I'll just let you know too. So you can kind of see where the image, where I cut around the image. So um, it's a bit hard to avoid that line to making it looking like a sticker. But what you can do is, what I did do afterwards was I varnished it. And so I probably shouldn't have varnished it with a darker varnish because it kind of highlights those sticker areas there. So these are all little tips and tricks that you can learn when you're doing your own. But see how you can still see through to the grain of the wood through the graphic. Um, same with this, this one here. You can still see through to the uh, stencil in the background of that one. So there's some ideas. So we're going to just finish off our deer here by using uh, antiquing glaze. So this is like a bit of a glaze that you can put over anything really. You can use it for furniture, um, signs, anything you want to create an aged look for. Have we got some more great answers there, Shireen? You look like you don't yes. ever tell me another one. There's, I, I really love this one. Okay. Jolene has suggested yes. putting some sheet music, say, oh, for example, yes. Jingle Bells. 
perfect just some really old style yes. sheet music that sounds great for the holiday season i really that's love a great that idea. idea some sheet music and you could even uh, use the sheet music as a, see how i've done this stencil here you could use sheet music as a background then to something else as well like that would be a great little tip and idea we are going to seal this with some antiquing glaze so the glaze um, you can get glazes all over the place. I'm just using Fusion's antiquing glaze today. And we just want to dip a little bit in the end of our brush. So glaze is something that you're not painting it on, you're um, brushing it on but wiping it off. So we want to leave like a streaky, aged, wood-looking appearance. What I did with this, this is just an old board that was actually what we call MDF. I don't know if they use the same words in America for this. Do you know, Marty? MDF. I don't know, let me know. It's just some kind of, it's almost like a masonite board. Well, it's not that either, is it? I don't know. You're looking at me like, don't ask me that question. Um, okay, so we've got a little bit of antique glaze on our brush and we're gonna just simply, we're going along with the grain, which I've just used as long ways because I've painted it that way. And you can see it's quite dark going on. I'll just do this one section to show you first of all. You're just trying to get all of the edges. And then we're going to use a cloth, probably not a wet one. I have a dry cloth, I'll use a paper towel. I'm just going to wipe, wipe it off. You might have to get close to kind of see the difference here in the effect of that. So you can see the difference between the antiquing glaze to give it that lovely authentic aged look and the white stark paint. So as we go over the picture, you'll notice too that these little fuzzy bits that of the paper that weren't um, coming away before will come off. So I've still got some antiquing glaze on my brush, so we're just going to keep going over it with that. I may need a little bit more. And we'll go over the whole piece. There we go. See how it looks really dark when you put it on, but then as we wipe it off, you'll see the, that it leaves a bit of a wood grainy kind of streaky look on it. So we're just going over the whole project and we will do the sides as well. So now just grabbing my paper towel, before it dries, so you've got a little bit of working time, before it dries, we'll grab our paper towel again and just we're just rubbing the excess off is really what you're doing clean bit rubbing off the excess Whew. how cool does that look it's all it looks all aged i can't believe someone said they did this on a flat rock that's just amazing. I wonder what they actually put on it. That's very cool. So if you have a look there, and I will do the sides later, but you can see how <coughs> vintage and antique that looks. Here's one that I did. Let me just put this on here. Here's the other one I did, but I, you can see in this one. Here's the one I did on my blog. So if you go to the Home Talk blog post, you'll be able to see this guy. Look, we have twins. We have twin deers. <laughs> So, um, so you can see the areas where this one's rubbed off here, this one rubbed off over there, but it gives it that vintage graphic look and see more of this one rubbed off than this one did here. Um, and on this one, I went crossways with the antiquing glaze. I don't know if you can tell that, but it looks like the grain of the wood is kind of going across. And on this one, it's going up and down. So you can see how that turned out. Thank you for all your lovely hearts. Oh, that makes me feel good. All your lovely hearts across the screen. Shireen, look, do you have a winner yet for our Home Talk tote bag giveaway? Um, don't forget if you, uh, that you can subscribe at the end of this um, to all the Home Talk live DIY videos because Home Talk will pop up occasionally and have a live demo just like the one you've seen today. So don't forget to subscribe at the end. We have a giveaway winner.
Yes, I really think it should be Jolene Foster. Jolene with, Foster. With the idea for putting sheet music that was oh, appropriate yeah. to the season. She yes. was really the most unique idea and I unique thought that idea. was lovely. Very lovely. So Jolene, thank you so much for your idea of putting sheet music that's seasonal, so jingle bells or, you know, one of those, onto uh, graphic onto the wood to make a sign and you could even do sheet music onto furniture that'd be beautiful so that's lovely now before I go where's my little sheet of paper that tells me what's coming up next because um, the next home talk live demo sounds pretty amazing so we've done some Christmassy stuff here today but you will still need this one for Christmas guys because after you've hit the subscribe button at the end of this broadcast so you don't miss any more Home Talk Lives, be sure to tune in tomorrow at 5pm EST where we're showing how to make, not me but someone else, is going to show how to make DIY toilet bombs. You heard it. DIY toilet bombs. And why do we need that for Christmas? Because you want your house smelling great at Christmas time, people. It's true. You want the house beautiful. And my husband's laughing at me. It's true. They said it here. Home talk. Watch it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to jump over on my blog and subscribe, irestorestuff.com. I'm Sharon from Australia, signing out. Thank you so much for watching our Christmas wall art graphic DIY.